I was diagnosed uh, in 2008 with pulmonary fibrosis. In 2010, I received my lung transplant. And today, I am at 7.8 lung anniversary. I started off with a slight dry cough. I didn't know what it was. I would talk and I would cough, and I would talk and I would cough, and you don't know another life. So to me, this was my normal. The first pulmonologist I went to, he said, Ms. De La Rosa, you, know, you have this disease, I believe it's uh, pulmonary fibrosis. You have two to five years to live. You need to go straight to the hospital. Ms. De La Rosa, you don't have a lot of time. It's a, a reality check you're not expecting to hear. I never heard of pulmonary fibrosis. And he says, it'll just be one to three days. We're gonna do a lung biopsy just to confirm. So I go to the hospital, and what should have been a one to three day stay ended up being 26 days. I mean, I thought for sure I wasn't gonna make it. After four surgeries, my lung collapsing twice, from that moment, I was worse. Basically, I would breathe like this. <gasps> I could only inhale. My first pulmonologist said, Ms. Delarosa, it's time. It's time for you to be referred for transplant. Your lung capacity is at 20%. There's nothing we can do for you. And I got my transplant on 6, 7, 10. To me, it's my literal second birth. I remember taking off the cannula and then just uh, breathing in and saying, wow, that's what, that's how I'm supposed to be. That's normal. And it was uh, taking that first breath was, uh, there are no words. That first year, it was a journey, you know, in and out of the hospital, from going to having no medications to having 40 anti-rejection meds and all these different pills was an adjustment. Even on my new lung, I probably collapsed about 10 times. But uh, finally, after the 10th time, uh, I got well and, you know, my lungs started breathing on its own. After I recovered, I wanted to give back to the hospital that saved my life, and so I'm a volunteer ambassador. So I'm able to go and see patients, anyone that needs encouragement, that's having a hard time. Even though I'm a volunteer there, I'm also a patient, so I follow them to the clinic side, and I take their pictures, I hear their story, I hear their complaints, I hear their compliments, but I'm just an encouragement for them. When I was first diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, I didn't know anything about it. And I looked online and guess who was there? The Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation out of Chicago. I remember making that phone call and I said, ma'am, you know, I have this terrible disease. You know, do you have any information? She says, yeah, we have a booklet. We'll send it to you. And I was encouraged to start my own support group because I thought, surely I'm not the only one here in San Antonio. The closest one was in Houston, which is about 200 miles from here. And I just opened up a little Facebook account and uh, people started finding me. Because of the PFF, I'm eternally grateful. When I looked just for any type of help, they gave me the resources that I needed. When I was so desperate, in need of hope, in need of encouragement, they gave me life. One of our pulmonary docs at our hospital, he looked me up and he says, hi, Ms. De La Rosa, I know that you have a support group and I'd like to come to your group. In 2014, we had our first free clinic. We decided that we wanted to offer his expertise to people that could not afford insurance. And so we just encourage each other. It's just a gathering for us to get together, a family. As a pulmonary fibrosis, a PFF ambassador, I give hope to those that have no hope. I encourage them by being alive, by looking into their eyes and telling them, I understand you. I give them the hope that I too needed when I was dying. That's why I'm an advocate for pulmonary fibrosis giving hope to people that have no hope.